Hi guys, so my good friend Jeff uploaded a video yesterday about um, the UK breaking international law and I think, but I don't want to put words in Jeff's mouth, but I think that Jeff actually supports this. But let's hear what he had to say. A new government bill, the Internal Market Bill, designed to ensure the smooth operation of the whole UK internal market, will contain a clause or clauses that break international law, says the Northern Ireland Secretary Brandon Lewis. And this will be enough to cause a catastrophic and total meltdown of the pro-EU lobby in the UK. It'll look like someone had a million candle birthday cake. Blobs everywhere. <laughs> now, you can't criticise Jeff for comedy. This is hilarious, OK? Um... So Jeff has a problem with people having a problem with the UK breaking international law. I have a problem with the UK breaking international law, so I assume Jeff has a problem with me having that problem. Answering urgent questions on the withdrawal agreement in the House of Commons today, Brandon Lewis was asked by the chair of the Justice Committee and Tory MP Bob Neill, Will he assure us that nothing proposed in this legislation does or potentially might breach international obligations or international legal arrangements? To which the Northern Ireland Secretary responded by saying, I would say to my honourable friend that yes, this does break international law in a very specific and limited way. We are taking the power to disapply the EU law concept of direct effect required by Article 4 in a certain very tightly defined circumstances. And of course, out come all the jokers saying that they'll now feel empowered to break the law as they see fit, but in a very specific and limited way in very tightly defined circumstances. So that must be OK then. Well, most of us have done that sometime in our lives. Foot gets a bit heavy on the accelerator when you're late, doesn't it? Um, so, Jeff, are you saying it's OK to break the law? If it's in very limited circumstances? Or you're saying it's not OK to break the law? Let's just take a step back here and let's switch around a little. Imagine it's the EU have come out and said, actually, we're going to ignore part of the withdrawal agreement. We're actually going to um, break international law. Do you think Jeff would be saying, well, that's OK. You know, we've all broken the law from time to time, so we shouldn't really have a problem with that. Does anyone honestly think Jeff would be OK with that? I wouldn't be OK with that. If the EU said we're actually going to break international law, I would have a problem with that. In the same way, if the UK says we're going to break international law, I have a problem with that. That's something that separates me from Jeff. Jeff is OK with the UK breaking international law, I, I assume. He's not very clear in this video, so I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I'm getting the impression that he's OK with that. But I'm pretty sure that if the, if the EU came, around and say, came out and said, we're actually going to break international law, I don't think he would be too happy about it. Perhaps he would be melting down like his candle analogy. Anyway, Remainers and rejoiners and the left have taken up their political cudgels and it has apparently been the cause of the Treasury solicitor and head of the government legal profession, Sir Jonathan Jones, deciding to quit. And Theresa May was not best pleased and had already said, The United Kingdom government signed the withdrawal agreement with the Northern Ireland Protocol. This parliament voted that withdrawal agreement into UK legislation. The government is now changing the operation of that agreement. Given that, how can the government reassure future international partners that the UK can be trusted to abide by the legal obligations of the agreements it signs? And she's correct. If the UK say, we'll agree to something, and then later say, well, actually, we're going to tear, tear up that agreement, why would anyone later on go into an agreement with the UK over anything? Why would anyone sign an agreement with the UK if they say, if they're willing to say later, oh, well, I actually don't like what I signed and I'm going to pick it apart or I'm going to throw it away altogether? This undermines trust. You know, 
And a document is one thing, but trust is another thing. And this undermines trust. And also, even if you so even if the UK says, well, we're going to um, to throw away documents or whatever, we're going to throw the agreement in the bin, there are consequences. And I talked about this on the stream last night, how if the UK says we're going to uh, ignore the withdrawal agreement, we're going to ignore parts of it, the EU can take the UK to court, the UK would receive a fine, and if they refuse to pay fines or whatever, there can be economic sanctions against the UK. So imagine a, a scenario where the UK is sanctioned by the EU. Do you think the UK could go to the United States or to other countries and say, Let, we want to have a, a free trade agreement with you while we're under sanctions? This would either eliminate the possibility of having a free trade agreement with the, the likes of the United States, for example, or it would at least put them in a position where they are begging for some type of agreement and getting a bad deal, but the other party getting a much better deal because they can use it as leverage. Now, as I said in a video yesterday, the problem with the law is that the government still has to obey it. And once the courts get their pro-EU molars into it, then any such law will be voided. Can you provide some evidence that the courts are pro-EU? You know, if, I, if I'm arrested for some crime and I go to you know, face a judge and I'm sent to prison, is it, uh, is it possible for me to use the argument, well, I was sent to prison because, not because I broke the law, but because um, the judge didn't like me. <laughs> he didn't agree with my politics. Uh, I don't think that really washes. But if you truly believe the EU, uh, sorry, if you, if you truly believe the judges or the courts are pro-EU, I'd love to see some evidence to support that. And that's when I brought up the possibility that the insertion of Article 38 into the 2020 Withdrawal Agreement Act was designed to specifically prevent the courts from overruling those clauses in the Internal Market Bill on the basis that Article 38 states that UK sovereignty subsists despite EU law still being operable under the withdrawal agreement itself. And this seems to have been confirmed when Tory MP Ian Duncan Smith told the House of Commons, I wonder if my honourable friend recalls that in the act that gave effect to the withdrawal agreement, it is quite clear in Clause 38 that the government did reserve to itself the right to make clarifications under the sovereignty clause. Now, given that is the case, and given that when the protocol was signed, the government recognised that the state aid rules would apply to Northern Ireland, this extension to the rest of Great Britain is an interpretation by the European Union. The government is quite within its rights to dispute that interpretation and use Clause 38 to explain that they don't agree with that and will not implement such an agreement. And writing in the digital edition of The Telegraph, Associate Editor Camilla Tominey said that this clause was the brainchild of veteran Tory MP and Brexiteer Sir Bill Cash. And she quotes an unnamed MP as saying, there is no doubt Clause 38 has paved the way for this. It provides the means for Parliament to overrule anything in the treaty. That is what MPs voted for in January. The idea that the Irish or Labour MPs or the European Commission didn't know what was in the Withdrawal Act is nonsense. Good old Bill Cash, thinking ahead constitutionally as always. And it seems it took a marathon session for its insertion into the Withdrawal Agreement Act to be agreed. Now, what's interesting is that Jeff doesn't actually tell us what's in Clause 38. Now, he said that Bill Cash was, you know, thinking ahead and put this in. And this allows the UK to break the law or to get around the law. Because what, he, what Jeff seems to be talking about here is a loophole. So the UK doesn't have to break the law. So the, the whole purpose of a loophole is to allow you to get around the law. Not to break the law, but to do something uh, that would 
in theory, break the law or would in, in spirit, I should say, break the law, but it allows you to get around the law. So so it's, it's interesting that Jeff hasn't actually told us what's in Clause 38. So what I did was I went to Google and I searched for Clause 38. And it says here, uh, it's actually called Section 38. Um, it says Parliamentary Sovereignty. Okay. Now, I'll just read what it says here from the original text. It says, It is recognised that the Parliament of the United Kingdom is sovereign. Okay, I don't see how that is in relation to um, not following UK, uh, following EU, uh, EU law or international law. In particular, its sovereignty subsists notwithstanding direct directly applicable or directly effective eu law <clears throat> continuing uh, to be recognized and available in domestic law by virtue of section 1a and 1b of the european union withdrawal act 2018 saving of the existing law for the implementation period okay I, i'm not a legal expert but i don't see anything here that says that the uk uh, can break international law uh, Section 7A of the Act, um, other directly applicable or directly effective aspects of the withdrawal agreement. Section 7B of the Act, deemed directly applicable or directly effective of the relation to the EEA, EFTA separation agreement and the Swiss uh, Citizens' Rights Agreement. And Section 7C of the Act, interpretation of law related to the withdrawal agreement other than the implementation period and EEA, EFTA, separation agreement and Swiss citizens' uh, rights agreement. Accordingly, nothing in the Act uh, derates, uh, from, derates from the sovereignty of the, United pa the Parliament of the United Kingdom. Um, so, what, what, as far as I can see, what they're trying to do is to say that because the word sovereignty is here, that means that we can do whatever we want. Because I don't see anything here. Now, I'm not, as I said, I'm not a legal expert, so maybe I'm not reading this document correctly. Um, but it seems to me that uh, there's nothing here that says that the UK can break the law. <laughs> Why would a legal document say you can break the law? <laughs> and who would sign it, you know... You can't create legal documents that say you can break the law in the same way that I can't, I can sign an agreement, you know, I could, I and Jeff could write an agreement and in that agreement it says that Jeff can punch me in the face and both of us can sign it, but if it breaks into, but, it, but by Jeff punching me in the face, that's actually breaking the law. So that actual document would be invalid. So. Um, so if the UK are trying to say that the withdrawal agreement is invalid, I, I really don't understand the argumentation here. First, Jeff and the Brexiteers are saying that, yes, we can break international law. And second, they're trying to say, actually, we found a loophole in the law. So which is it? You found a loophole or you're breaking international law? Now, another argument from the Brexiteers, not that Jeff is making it here, is that, well, actually, the EU broke the law. Which I found absolutely absurd because if the EU broke the law, then you can take them to court. You can sanction them. You can sue them. So why aren't you organizing a movement or a campaign or um, a class action to take the EU to court for breaking the law? Isn't it strange how Brexiteers, you know, even ones with lots of money, aren't campaigning to take the EU to law to, to court, sorry, if they've broken the law. Once again, this is just an act of desperation. First say we're willing to break the law, then say, uh, actually we better not say that, let's say we found a loophole in the law. But none of this is going to wash, it's desperation. It's Boris Johnson and his Brexiteers trying to find uh, some way to push the EU in, in a direction that the EU don't want to go. It's a bargaining chip. And it's quite disgusting because they're willing to use Northern Ireland as that bargaining chip. We're going to undermine international law. We're going to undermine eventually the, uh, the Good Friday Agreement and the Withdrawal Agreement. 
Um, we're, we're basically going to throw Northern Ireland under a bus again um, for Brexit uh, because we don't care about Northern Ireland. We've never cared about Northern Ireland. Brexiteers have never cared about Northern Ireland. I've said this before. When it came to protecting the Union and Brexit, Brexiteers every time went for Brexit. Brexiteers always went for Brexit. They ignored the Union. They, they of course, will complain saying, look, at the Union is under threat. We must protect the Union. We must not allow Scotland to become independent. We must defend Northern Ireland. But their actions... Uh, tell us the opposite. So I would like Jeff to explain, does he support the UK breaking international law? If it's yes, does he support the EU breaking international law? If it's no, then I'd like to explain why. Because for me, as I said at the beginning, if the UK break international law, they should be punished. If the EU break international law, they should be punished. Let me know in the comments section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?